I have here a simple three resistor parallel circuit and today what we're going to do is show you how to take your resistance, voltage and current readings for this type of circuit. Let's go ahead and start our resistance measurements. So I'm going to go ahead and put my meter on 40. Now R1 is 12K, R2 is 1K, and R3 is 8.2K. So I'm going to measure R1, so I have to take the one terminal out of the circuit, connect up my meter, and I read 11.91. Go ahead and put that back in the circuit. I'll take R2, pull one of its terminals out, connect up my meter, I get 0.99, which is good. And I'll measure R3, pull its terminal out, connect up, and I get 8.08K. That one's a little bit low, but still within tolerance level. Now I'm going to measure our total. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my power supply out of the circuit. And with everything still connected up, I can just go ahead and measure across the R1, which will give us the value for the entire circuit. And I will turn my meter down. And our total for this circuit is... 823 ohms. Let's do my calculations. That is correct. So I'll go ahead and put my source back in. Let's now go ahead and measure our voltage source. So I've already powered up my voltage source and it's set to 5 volts. So I'll set my meter to 40 and I will Pull out the leads for the power supply and measure the voltage coming in and I get 5.02 volts. So I'll go ahead and plug it back into the circuit. And now let's go ahead and measure the voltage across the R1. Now remember, in parallel, voltage remains the same. So I should see the same voltage as the source. And I do, 5.0102. Let's go to R2, again in parallel, so I should see the same voltage, and I do, 5.01, and then the voltage for R3, 5.01. So that's how we measure voltage in the parallel circuit. It's time now to go ahead and take my current readings for the circuit. Since I don't know what the actual current's going to be, I'm going to go ahead and turn my meter down to 400 milliamps. Now, I want to measure I total first. So what I need to do is break the circuit from the source to the actual circuit. So all I got to do is pull out my negative lead of the power source, connect up my negative terminal, and then utilizing a second jumper, I'll plug that into my power bar, and connect up my positive lead of my meter, and I get 6 milliamps. Since it's 6, I know I can go down to the next setting, so I'll go down to 40 milliamps, and that gives me a little bit more accurate reading of 6.11 milliamps of current. Now what I want to do is go ahead and measure the individual resistors, so I'll put my source back in. Now one of the nice things about using jumpers is that it makes it easier to break the circuit. So let's go ahead and look at the current through R1. So what I'm going to do is pull the jumper out, connect up my negative lead, and then take my positive lead and plug it up to the bottom of R1. Now it's important that you plug your meter up where you have the break. Had I plugged this into the top of the resistor, I would have basically had a dead short and that would have blown the fuse in my meter. So R1 has a current total of 0.42 milliamps. So I'll go ahead and move down to the next lower setting, and I get 419 microamps. Now remember, if you do that, you got to make sure that you move it back up to the next ups, upper setting because you don't know what your next resistor is going to be. So I'll go ahead and 
plug that back in and let's go ahead and take the current of R2. I'll break the circuit. Plug up my meter where I had the break and I get 5.07 milliamps of current through R2. Put R2 back into the circuit and break the circuit at the bottom of R3. Plug my meter up where the break is. And I get a current reading of 0.62 milliamps. So I'll go ahead and turn my meter down. And I get 616 microamps of current through R3. Now you want to break the circuit and put your meter where the uh, break is at. Now here I did it all on the bottom. I could have easily have taken my readings at the top. I'll break the circuit here at the positive lead, connect my positive source up, take my spare jumper, connect it up to the power bar, and as you see, I get the same reading. Same thing with the individual resistors. If I take the positive jumper for R1 and break the circuit there, put my meter on the jumper, and the meter at the top of the resistor, I get the same current reading. Now again, remember, if I was to plug this up to the bottom, I would have a dead short here, and that would blow the fuse in my meter. It's one of the easiest ways to blow a fuse in a particular meter. And that's how we take current readings in a parallel circuit.